This retreat is full of the sexiest people in the world. Little What's happening? I would rate myself a 10 out of 10. Bring that here, reel it in. This is literally heaven on earth. Cheers, this sex. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Firstly, I just want to thank everybody that signed up to support the channel over at heckoffkami.com. I know that money's pretty tight right now, so seriously, I appreciate you guys helping me to keep the show going on. And I've got big plans for the summer. The rest of the year, too, but like the summer, it's going to be exciting. Literally, there's a Google Doc on the hock top entitled Epic Summer Plans with a bunch of video ideas. Maybe one of those ideas will be the next video to come out. Who knows? I guess you'll just have to stay tuned. But yeah, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can do that at hackoffcommy.com. But anyways, on to Netflix. I really dislike Netflix. And there's a few reasons for that, even ignoring their politics and the type of garbage that they produce. So firstly, we'll talk about this particular show, what it's about, why it's bad. And then we'll talk about some of the other stuff that they've done. And a lot of this is inexorably going to get into how our culture regards sex and sexuality and how what we're seeing right now are quite literally symptoms of a dying society. And then we'll talk about why you should just cancel Netflix in general if you're not already convinced. So what you saw in the beginning was a trailer for a show that came out on Netflix last month called Too Hot to Handle. And the premise of the show is basically they take 10 attractive people who I guess had previously been actively engaged in hookup culture and then they put them together at this resort and they're not allowed to kiss each other or do anything sexual. And if they do this successfully, then they split the prize money, which is like a hundred something thousand dollars. And every time they kiss each other or do something sexual, money is taken from the prize money. So before we even talk about what this show represents and the message that it conveys, I just want to point out, as you saw, it doesn't leave a whole lot to the imagination. You hear and see almost everything. It's actually, it's just softcore pornography. So there's that. But also even the premise of the show says a lot about where we are as a culture right now, because the premise of the show says, don't indulge in lustful pursuits. Don't engage in purely transactional sexual behavior, not because it's wrong and not because it's immoral, but because we'll pay you if you don't do it, which just indulges a separate vice of yours, which is greed and materialism. That's fundamentally what the show is saying. It's saying, oh, well, we have 10 people together. Obviously, they must want to hook up with each other. So we'll say that they can't and we'll offer them money for it. And then American families... The Netflix generation, whose mom and dad, or probably just mom since two-parent households are vanishing, mom got Netflix to keep the kids entertained. They're scrolling around. They see this. They don't know what it is, but it looks interesting. And the next thing you know, your kid's got a porn addiction. And if you don't know why that's bad, I've done separate videos about that particular topic, the average age that kids are being exposed to pornography being 11 years old. And I went ahead and I checked the Pornhub searches to see if my suspicion was correct. And sure enough, Too Hot to Handle was right up there. As if that's a shock. I mean, the show was literally designed to elicit sexual interest from the audience because other Otherwise, it's not interesting. Otherwise, there's no point. The show couldn't exist with just 10 normal people. They probably wouldn't act too romantically with each other. So they went out deliberately to find the most attractive and the most sexually promiscuous people so that they could promote and normalize this idea that, oh, wow, not having sex is so difficult that if you can somehow manage this, we'll give you $100,000. It's all about the financial cost of indulging in your sexual desire within the context of the show. But what about the other costs? Want to talk about those? What about the spiritual cost, the emotional cost? What about those? What about the cost of your long-term mental well-being? Because when you normalize those sexual attitudes, guess who suffers? Kids and families. Because the only necessary relationship between men and women is a sexual or romantic relationship. That's the only relationship that requires one man and one woman. You know, of course, there are different tendencies between men and women to exhibit certain personality traits, but overlap still exists. So 
you know, you might want a female friend because she'll be more empathetic and she'll listen to your problems. But even though it's much more likely that you'll find a woman that fits that profile, you could still also find a man that fits that profile if you look hard enough. So the only relationship that requires one man and one woman is a romantic sexual relationship because those are the relationships that create children, that bring life into the world. And the problem is that since the infrastructure of male-female relationships is biologically and psychologically engineered to communicate through the medium of sexuality, if you normalize and promote deviant standards and practices for sexual behavior, it's going to fundamentally alter the ways in which men and women communicate and behave. And the problem with that is if you do that, and we already have to a large degree thanks to the sexual revolution, the society will cease to exist because the purpose of sexuality is to bring men and women together to have children and then to bond those men and women together so that they are unified and can stay unified to raise their children. That's why if you look at who's actually having the best sex, it's always married religious people. And when you don't regard sexuality in that capacity, if you're only concerned about your immediate pleasure, then you're gonna pervert yourself and make yourself miserable. Do you think it's a coincidence that there are so many people on the left who promote degenerate sexual behavior and then also cannot be satisfied sexually without participating in a bunch of weird kinks and then also have alarmingly high rates of mental illness? It's not a coincidence. Human sexuality is extremely powerful and it's designed to unite us with a man or a woman to create and sustain a family. And if male-female relationships aren't oriented selflessly or they're not oriented towards responsibility, if they're oriented so I can use your body to gratify my own desires and you can use me for the same, we're both just indulging in our own desires with no one else in mind, then children are not going to be well off because that is not a sustainable dynamic to facilitate their well-being. Nor is it a sustainable dynamic for the well-being of the men and women involved. Like you can look at the association between mental illness and sexual partners for that one, but that dynamic is what leads to the collapse of the society because it leads to the collapse of the family structure. And without that, there is no society. And by the way, the collapse of society, that doesn't mean riots in the street, buildings on fire, uh, everything's, no, that means like, higher rates of mental illness, suicide, drug overdoses, things of that nature, which is exactly what we're seeing. And that, by the way, is why it's a good idea not to have sex before marriage, especially for women, because they secrete more oxytocin during sex than men do, because your capacity to bond to another person will diminish over time. And if you look at the divorce rates by amount of sexual partners that people have had prior to marriage, that much is clear. So if you want to live a happy and fulfilled life, you have to have discipline. It's the same reason you should manage your time wisely. The same reason you shouldn't eat too much junk food. Same reason that you should exercise. It's all about discipline. And it applies equally to sexual desire. Your best chance of living a happy and fulfilling life is by being married and having children. And the way to give yourself the best chances of that succeeding is by abstaining from sex until you're married. There is no reason to betray your future self just so your present self can gratify his or her primitive desires. And that's the other thing. They always talk about it like, what do you mean having sex with strangers every weekend isn't a good idea? It's a natural desire. What's your point? There's nothing inherently good about indulging in natural desires. And I know that they try to apply this universally by even suggesting that being fat is healthy and beautiful because people like to eat. But it's very clear that this type of behavior is actually harmful. And previous generations were not very good at this. So now we're going to have to be. And oftentimes it just makes people who are already unwell even worse, particularly women. They try to use their sexuality to cope with past trauma and to siphon external gratification from people so that they can feel validated. They literally, they get addicted to the dopamine. This is the story of the thought. This is the story of the girls who post thirst traps on social media. This is the story of all those TikTok girls. They're addicted to it. And I guarantee you that they have serious baggage. I guarantee you. That's why if you're interested in a girl and you find out that she's loose, save yourself the trouble, my guy. Dip. Get out of there. Because sooner or later, you're going to find out about the baggage that she was trying to distract you from. And it's going to be a headache. Like, I could maybe understand using sex as social capital 50 or even 20 years ago, back when girls were like, no, I don't want to. But now it's like, okay, cool. Good for you, bro. That's really cool, bro. Oh, you just had sex with the girl taking SSRIs? I bet that was difficult. What'd you have to do? Talk to her literally once? The true competition for this generation of men isn't going to be seeing who can add more notches to their belt. The true competition for this generation of men is going to be seeing who can land themselves a good, moral, nice-looking woman. And by the way, the way to do that is by being yourself a good, moral, strong man. You don't necessarily have to be good-looking. You can just uh, you know, be able to provide for her. Use that IQ of yours. Shouldn't be a problem. But maybe, maybe I'm just outdated. That's what they always say. Oh, well, those times were so Puritan. Those times were so repressive. Yeah, you know what else they were? They were times of brilliance and times of prosperity. There's a great book, absolutely pivotal reading. You know, you get book recommendations when you're signed up over at heckoffcommy.com, but here's one for free. It was written by a man named Dr. J.D. Unwin, and he analyzes 80 different nations and six different civilizations throughout history, and he examines all of their individual rises and falls, and he ranks all of them in four different categories based on how developed they were. And what he ended up finding was 
that the collapses of these societies were largely determined by their loosening of sexual conventions and lessening of monogamous relationships. And through stricter sex conventions and abstinence, nations could actually channel their sexual energy into aggressive expansion by conquering less energetic countries as well as successfully cultivating achievements in the arts and sciences. And that's the thing. Your sexual drive is your most powerful drive. But if you allow it to consume you, you will lose sight of everything greater than yourself and the dopamine to which you're addicted, which is why Dr. Unwin concluded that as societies develop, they become more sexually liberal, uh, which diminishes the social entropy of the society, which is just a sociological term, which means like the momentum or sustainability, along with its creative and expansive energy or its capabilities to produce culture and to gain power. Does that ring a bell? Does that sound familiar to you? Because that is the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Western world. It is dying. We are dying. And ultimately, it will be our choice. So we have to seriously be prepared to make sacrifices because this country isn't dying because of socialism or because of big government. Those are just symptoms of the problem, which is that the family structure in this country is dying. If we actually move to solve that problem, all of those symptoms will disappear. I guarantee it. The only societies that vote themselves into big government are societies that are unstable. How do you maintain stability? Preserve the family. It's really that simple. The complicated part is actually acting upon the solution. So we have to think long term. Don't think about it in terms of what you'll be abstaining from doing. Think about it in terms of what good that will bring you in the future. And also the consequences. Our ancestors didn't shed blood to defeat the most powerful empire in the world just so you could allow their country to collapse because you're just too focused on gratifying your impulsive desires to look at the big picture. And we're going to do a whole video on what that big picture actually is at some point, but that's just something to think about. These sexual attitudes aren't new. Liberal sexual attitudes aren't new. They're not progressive. The left pretends that everything has just been progress, building up to where we are now. So if you believe in anything from the past, it's outdated and therefore incorrect since we've made so much progress since then. But as we've discussed, liberal sexual attitudes are not new. They're actually responsible for the destruction of many societies throughout history. And here's something important to know. The biggest political realization is that most of the people that you think are dumb are actually at least twice as smart as you are. When the left thinks about how some of these societies in the past, you know, namely in the West, they held very modest and abstinent sexual attitudes. And coincidentally, they built the modern world, but the left just thinks that, oh, well, uh, the, the men were dumb and wanted to control women. That's why. No, no, they had reasons. They knew they were smarter than you. Any Ivy League graduate with a degree in feminist theory would lose to a debate with any farmer in colonial America. That is a fact. But anyways, back to Netflix. Netflix is just one of those companies that profits off the destruction of this country. And that might sound like a silly thing to say out of context, but it's totally true. The content that they produce and then sell is exactly the type of content that we were talking about, that erodes standards of sexual desire and behavior and promotes and normalizes degeneracy. Because that's the thing. It's not just that they've got titles on there that are bad. The content that is produced by them is arguably the worst content that they offer. You've got shows like Big Mouth, which is literally about child sexuality. It's literally animated child pornography, but it's a cartoon, so it's okay. It's for kids, whatever. We all know that if it were live action, we'd be upset. But John Mulaney does one of the voices, and we love John Mulaney, so it's okay. Or they don't stop there. You've got shows Shows that feature nine-year-old girls masturbating, which I guess goes along with what the World Health Organization wants. You've got shows about 10-year-old girls being transgender and hanging out with drag queens and gay clubs. This is the type of content that your kids are watching. And don't think that they're not, because they are. Or their friends are watching it. They're hearing about it on social media. Perhaps they're being taught about this stuff in their schools, which is very likely. So yeah, of course they're going to want to check it out, right? So think about that when you're like, oh, I just want to watch Breaking Bad. I just, I just want to watch The Office. Okay, but this is where your money's going. That's something to keep in mind. These companies don't care. All they care about is money. And that's liberalism for you. That is neoliberalism. A lot of times we hear, oh, liberal, and we think, oh, no, socialism. That's not true. One of the cores of neoliberalism is support for free market capitalism. The problem is that when you have a liberal framework for capitalism, there's no morality. Nothing matters except consumption. Conservatism is defined by what we're trying to conserve, which is ultimately American society. And in order to conserve American society, we need morality. They don't care about that. These companies don't care about that, especially with kids and selling sex to kids. Because if they can get you when you're a kid, they get you when your brain is developing, they've got you for life. And they know that. That's why they're selling sex to these kids and to the whole country. It exploits your most fundamental and primitive desire for their gain. And at that point, like the product doesn't even really matter. That's why all of my videos get demonetized and some of them even get taken down. But Jake Paul can advertise porn to his underage audience on his channel, nothing happens. Jake Paul doesn't speak out against the narrative. Jake Paul makes big money for YouTube. So yeah, he's perfect. And that's all there's left to do in a society with no family structure, with no God, with no pride, no sense of patriotism or national identity. All that we are is consumers. 
Not producers anymore, since those corporations sent those jobs overseas. We're primarily consumers. So we buy our products, then we go to our jobs, and we work, and then we wait for the next products. Oh, we get excited when Disney comes out with another terrible movie to bait our childhood nostalgia, because it takes us back to a time before we realized how bad things had become for a couple hours. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that anymore. We don't have time for terrible Disney movies anymore. We don't have time for Netflix. Stop binge watching television shows as a hobby. You aren't gaining anything from doing that. You are wasting your time. And when you look back on your life, you're not gonna be thinking about how glad you are that you watched all of Parks and Rec four times. You should be being productive because we're really counting on you. Everyone that you know that doesn't know or doesn't care about the fight that we're in right now for the future of our country, we can't count on them, but you know about it. And because of that, we need you to be on top of things, which means we don't have time to waste anymore. And don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that you can't ever relax, but, and you probably know this, our generation uses relaxation as a form of entertainment or like a pastime, and your life should not revolve around pastimes. You have to figure out what your purpose is and work towards that. And we need to stop being okay with giving money to companies that are working against the interests of our families and our country. Hey guys, if you like this video, take three seconds and give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and share the video with a friend. That would really help me out. You know what would help all of us out? If you canceled Netflix. It would help you most of all. Cancel Netflix, read more books, get a hobby, you know, develop skills, become a better man or a woman. 7% of my audience um, are, are women, so I'm not going to discriminate, of course, all about equality. A real egalitarian channel, the, the heck off commie is, right? But, uh... Yeah, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.